Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, fresh off the digital influenza, and here to bring you a review of the Corbot V War Axe from their Eternal Warfare Weapons of Destruction lineup. The axe is packed in a compact and dead solid little plastic shell, and something that a lot of people are probably never even going to look at, which is a true crime, is the cool picture of pure, utter destruction full of burning buildings and murdered robots, which was probably drawn by an artist of such impeccable fortitude that he would cause groins of men and women alike to burst in fine, wet mists as he simply walks by. But you're not buying this for the art, you scum. You're buying this for the axe. So let's look at the axe. It is in three pieces. These pieces Okay, let me tell you what these do. They plug together. This is pretty damn exciting. Alright, we got an axe. A couple things about the axe by itself. Number one, when I saw pictures of this, I thought that these blades were going to be thin, translucent, little plastic laminates. Fragile and flexible. They are not. They are thick, orange, translucent plastic, sandwiched, in fact. Uh, these are two pieces of it closed around an L bracket. Uh, in here, and what's a really cool effect is that these things have this design tampoed on the sides, which is meant to re uh, represent something that makes them look like they're sharp. I, Gog Dog knows what I'm talking about. Thing is, it's tampoed on both sides, and the plastic is transparent, so that if you zoom in and look at it very closely and start tilting it, you can see the shadow of the other side's tampo beneath the one that you're looking at. It gives it this really cool pseudo-3D translucent effect. I like it. Also, the material of this thing um, is dead solid. At no point have I ever felt like this thing's gonna break. In fact, I've spent about a minute banging it like this, and nothing's come loose. These orange bits are glued in there. They're separate pieces. But this thing can really take a decent pounding. I don't know if this is getting it across well enough. You can just... Look at that, I'm throwing it all over the place. It's indestructible. Well, it's not. You could probably snap this if you tried. But, if you're just messing around with this thing on its own for display, or even waving your toys around a little bit, I don't see it breaking all that easily. The main weak points are up here in these shafts, and even then, they're a pretty robust plastic, and unless you actually just bend it like this, it'll probably be alright. So, as an axe, it's... It's tough. It's it's tough. It's solidly sculpted. It's got pointy bits. I like it. But it's supposed to be held. So, someone, come and hold this. Getting someone to hold the axe is quite a simple affair, but you do have to disassemble it, feed the shaft through the hand, and then reassemble it. If the hand is a closed hole, anyway. I know, this is the cliche thing to do, seeing how it was kind of designed for War for Cybertron Prime, and everybody is going to show War for Cybertron Prime. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll deal with that later, ladies and gentlemen. The size of this axe is perfect, in my opinion. It's not too small to look like something you can wave around, and it's not too overly large to look silly. It's hit that beautiful, perfect size between practical and psychopathic. However, you do have options. I mean, for one thing, the package does state you can hold this double-handed if you want. If I can twist his wrist properly, here we go. Uh, stick this together. And now he's dual-wielding it. So, there you go. Do you think this axe is too big, though? Are you looking at this and saying, Silly Vangelis, that's not cool. It's already skirted the realms of psychopathic. Let me fix that for you. Let's pull the bottom off. Alright, let's just toss this aside and... Oh, hey, look! Now it's smaller. I mean, yeah, the blade's always going to be huge, but I do like that you have the option of providing whoever you are handing this axe to with varying degrees of shaft size. And it does help with the customizing powers of the Corbot War Axe. Is it too heavy for the figure to hold? Uh, no. He's able to wave it over his head pretty easily. I mean, if you have loose joints, that's going to be a whole other story, but, um, I have had no problems messing around with this thing with a plethora of toys, and I think that actually just giving it to your War for Cybertron Prime and saying, Bob's your uncle, is a mistake. This thing has so much potential outside of just being given to the video game Optimus. Granted, it's only 15 bucks, and if that's all you want out of your 15 bucks, then your Optimus is happy. But I wanted more, and I was able to get more. Dark Energon! With this powerful unholy substance, 
The Decepticons shall rule Cybertron and its stores of Dark Energon forever! We must wield Dark Energon, my brethren, and infuse Dark Energon into our very beings. With Dark Energon, we will become living nightmares of- Holy shit! he's got an axe! Run! Here's Johnny! All work and no play makes Optimus Prime a dull Autobot! One of my favorite alternate modes for the axe is that of a scepter, or I suppose, like, cudgel or mace or whatever. Um, it's just a cool idea. I swear I saw this in Corbot V's photography, but I can't find a photo of this set up on their site anymore. But, uh, again, this is just a cool option. It is lacking, you know, the awesomeness of the orange blade, but the modular nature is what's really won me over with this design. That and the durability. In this case, it's not in here very tightly. The, the hand on Classics Megatron holds it pretty loose, but there are some hands that can hold it pretty darn tight. Classics Optimus, for example. Uh, these guys, they have the 5mm hole size, more or less. It's, it's kind of give or take on them. And uh, the War Axe doesn't feel like it's in danger when those tolerances are kind of fudged a little bit. In fact, the thinner ends here allow you to put it in the hands of guys with kind of thin fist holes. You just can't plug the axe or the handle back together all the way if you use that as a holding point. Another approach I like is to break up the axe into a small handled axe and small beating stick. That way you can kind of dual wield the things, you've got two shorter melee weapons for more precise hand to hand to weapon to weapon to axe to axe combat. And it shows, again, the lovely modular nature of the War Axe. At 15 bucks, with the intricate deco on the translucent plastic parts, the War Axe definitely looks like it's worth the money. Something that's settled when you realize just how bloody durable the thing is. I've spent countless minutes straight smacking the thing around, and I still haven't seen any breaks yet. Maybe I'm lucky, I don't know. But I've done my best to durability test this thing, seeing how it's a melee weapon accessory and all. And it has passed with flying colors. The fact that it's so universal, coupled with its modularity, is also a huge number of bonus points. Now, I do understand that that is kind of my taste versus other people's taste. Some folks really don't like the idea of giving a giant orange glowing axe to just anybody, and that is your choice. But if you aren't opposed to the idea, I can tell you that passing the axe around makes it so much more fun. And it is already perfectly suited as a display accessory for War for Cybertron Optimus. This is the epitome of something that you throw onto your pile of loot, existing larger order, or even pick up at a table at a convention. Corbot V's made an excellent start as a third-party company with this showing, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they put out next, because the construction on this thing is dead damn solid. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis. Perhaps I've been gushing a little bit, but, you know, giant durable modular weapons with glowy orange bits sort of hit me in all the right places. Anyway, I'm going to take these two fine chaps out back for a little bit more axe-to-axe -axe action. I'll see you next time, my darling Maid Marian.